Hello, thanks for making time to prepare for your paper to the on-screen Python test for Edexcel GCC Computer Science. Um, we're going to be working through question two of the um, sample paper at the back of the revision workbook. So if you're in year 11 at Fulford, you've been given a free copy. If you've lost it, um, then you can buy your own copy, but schools can get it cheaper than you can. We're not on commission. We don't make money from sales. Um, we lose money from buying them for you, um, but we strongly recommend that you have your copy of that so that you can work through it. Um, so, in the previous video, we showed you um, how to download these files. Start by opening up Q02 and then have the relevant page. I think it's page 100 and something or other, 106 or something, uh, for question two. Um, so, let's read it through. A programmer started to write a program for rock, paper, scissors, but it doesn't work properly. You need to open this file. So, I'm sorry, the book calls it slightly different to the file name. It should be Q02. And then we'll skip all of the instructions and jump straight to what you should save it as. And you should always save it at the beginning. So file and save as. And it must be saved exactly um, what it says in your paper. I've already got one called Q02 finished, so I'm going to override that. Um, so let's make a start. Fix the syntax error. Syntax error means we've broken the rules of the language, so it will not um, run at all. On line 10. Um, and we've used too many equal signs. Two equal signs is testing to see if the two things are the same. So it's checking to see if this constant is equal to this value. But this constant doesn't exist yet, so we'll have a syntax error. Um, what we want to do is assignment. Set the value of this constant to this string. So we'll just use one. And then in the um, exam, you'll tick that bullet point off so you know it's done. Fix the syntax error on original line 20. Let's have a look. So computer choice, that's a global variable. Um, and we're going to set it to something from choices. Choices is a global variable that stores a list of all the possible options using constants to store um, just the values. Seems a bit silly to me. You might as well have just put the values in there. But it does say, do not add any additional functionality. If you can think of a better way of coding it, don't. Just do what you're told to do. Um, so we're looking up a value from that list. So we're using square brackets for indexing, which means find a value at a particular position. And we've forgotten to put a square bracket on. It's always worth trying to run it at the start so you can see the error message. And it actually says the error is on line 21. Remember, the error message um, means the error will always be on the line it says or the line above. It will never be below um, to cause this um, error. So we've forgotten the square bracket. What does it actually do? Well, random.randint will choose a random integer, a random whole number between zero and two. That number we can use to index the list as in position zero, position one, or position two, so that we can get either rock, paper, or scissors and store it in this global variable. Nice. Tick it off um, on your book or on your paper, and then fix the logic error. So logic errors are harder because you're not going to get a syntax error which tells you exactly where the problem is. The code will run now. Um, so line 26, let's see. Right, let's work out what's happened. The user's been asked to type something in, and what the user's typed in is stored in U, and it's been converted to uppercase, so capital letters. Then we're checking to see if what the user types in is the same as what the computer has chosen at random, and it says we have a tie. That's logical at the moment, no logic errors. Otherwise, which is what Aleph means, if what the user types in is rock, um, then we have a scenario where the user wins, but we've got the wrong logic in here. So let's think, if you're rock, um, but the computer chooses paper, you're going to lose. Um, but if you're rock and the user chooses um, um, sorry, if the user chooses uh, rock and the computer chooses scissors, um, then the rock's going to win. So we want to make sure that we win here so that it shows the right message. Uh, so if the computer choice is equal to um, scissors, I suppose. That's right, isn't it? Because rock will blunt the scissors. Um, good. So then what have we got? Uh, fix the logic error on line 36. So down here, if the um, computer choice is scissors, well, they can't be the same at the moment. Up here, we've said if the user chooses scissors, 
and the computer chooses scissors, well, that would be a draw. So that can't be that. Let's see. What can defeat scissors? Um, well, a, a rock can defeat scissors. We've seen that already. So if the computer chooses rock, then it's going to say, um, then rock smashes scissors. All right. Uh, and then change identifier U to a more meaningful name. Now, this is a bit harder because U comes up quite a lot. So before we do this, I'm just going to run it and see if it works. I'll go for rock. And we have a tie. So at this point, I really want to see what the user's got and what the um, computer's got. But we shouldn't add any more functionality. Um, but I suppose we can step through to see what's going to happen. So run debug. Here we go. Um, run and step over is what I want, F6. So here we go. We're going to go through. The computer has chosen something. So computer choice is scissors. Great. Then the user's asked to type something. So I'll go for rock. Then we convert that to uppercase. Uh, and we can see the logic. So I win because rock covers scissors. Does that make sense? Yeah, rock destroys scissors. I don't know why they've used covers. I would have said blunts, but we're not allowed to change anything to make it more, um, to add any more functionality. We've got to stick with what's there. Um, okay, so make you a more meaningful identifier. Um, I would go for user choice. Now, if it was me, I'd follow the Python naming convention with um, underscores, but because They've chosen to use camel case, as in a lump on the back of a camel's back. Um, and I'm going to be consistent with that, even though we shouldn't do it in Python. It doesn't really matter as long as you're consistent. But it does mean that you've now got to do that every time you see U. So control C, control V. Every time we see U, we have to replace it for user choice. It's a more meaningful identifier. What's an identifier? It's something that identifies a variable or a constant. Um, my goodness, you've got to find it in a lot of places, haven't you? Um, there we go. And if we miss one, it doesn't matter because we'll run it and it will soon tell us. All right, let's test it and see. Rock, paper. I'll go for paper. Does that make sense? You lose because scissors cuts something. Um, well, that's interesting because um, it doesn't say what it cuts, and that's presumably because I forgot to change this one here. There we go. So there's a lot of things you've got to change for it to work properly. Great. Add a comment to explain why the user input is converted to uppercase on original line 22. So I'm going to add the comment above. Hash makes a comment. Um, and it's not enough here to say convert to uppercase because that's what you've been told. The comment has to explain why. Convert to uppercase um, to compare with the computer choice, as in all of the computer choices are in uppercase here. So the user's choice has to be in uppercase as well. And then it says, add at least one use of white space to aid readability. So white space just means a blank line. Um, so I would always put a blank line um, uh, just above a comment, so it's clear that the comment refers to the line below. It kind of splits your code up into um, paragraphs. So that, that would be fine at this point. I would be tempted to add another comment in here, um, and I'd be tempted to put another comment in here to explain the logic, but it doesn't ask us to, so I'm not going to. So let's undo that. Oh dear, I didn't want to undo all of them. There we go. Fab. So in the next video, we're going to go through question three, where we have to convert a flowchart um, into some Python code.